Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs and in today's video I'm going to show you how to complete a machine called Haircut. This machine is on Hack the Box and it's one of the machines that is recommended for the OSCP. So we're just going to complete. It's a Linux machine and it's super easy to complete. It's a retired machine on Hack the Box so you're going to need a subscription. Otherwise just watch what I do here. It's going to be a fun machine. Our IP address is 10.10.10.24. And I'm going to be running everything from my Kali Linux machine, which is running in VMware Fusion. So let's go into Kali. First thing is let's ping our machine 10, 10, 10 to 24. So as you can see, I can get there. So from here, let's make a directory and name it haircut. And then uh, let's cd to haircut. I already made mine. Then uh, from here, let's run our nmap. The first thing that we need to do is run an nmap minus sc minus sv. Save script. I want to output it to file code, which is 10 to 10 to 10. So I'll target 10 to 10 to 10 to 24. Our nmap is going to run using save script and finding version information. So as you can see, we have port 22, port 80. So this was just the top 1000 ports. So let's go ahead and um, check out port 80 and let's see what's there. We have a lady in a hair. Nothing much interesting. Is there anything in this image? So you want, maybe you want to save this image just in case you need to find any steg over here. Bounce the JPEG, it's going to be there. You can run steg hide to check in if there's any information that is hidden in this image. All right, so after finding that we have port 80 open, the first thing that we need to do is um, let's fire up GoBuster and Durbuster. I'll show you both. Derb HTTP 10.10.24. This is going to try to find some directories on, on, my, on my website. And also, I can fire up GoBuster, and I'm looking for directories and on this URL. So let's run them side by side. They should find the same information, but GoBuster is going to be more thorough. So as you can see, GoBuster was very quick. We found uploads right away and it's, it's, it's still going. So let's just give this a minute while we find all these directories. All right, so as you can see, um, Derb compared to GoBuster, Derb found uh, uploads and exposed.php and GoBuster is still going. So I'm going to cancel GoBuster here. And just leave derb. So let's go back here. Okay, so it's exposed through PHP. It says, now this is what we have. It says, enter a local addresses location you would like to check. Okay, so if we say go, curry scroll, that might be a link. Um, so that's an image, good. But we have the word curl here. Let's view the page source. What's really going on here with that? Requesting site, so it is a curl command. Okay, so let's see if this is a real curl command. Let's change this to, let's change this to my Kali Linux. What is my IP address? 10.10.14.3. Uh, if that is true, then let's do 10.10.3. I don't have anything running, so I don't expect anything to, to be curled here. Okay, failed connection refused. So yeah, it, it is trying to run a curl command. Okay, so reading through the curl, through the curl tutorial, here are the different options we can run curl. Obviously, we're going to be looking at this. So let's host our Python HTTP server here and try to see if we can upload. Remember earlier we found in a slash upload folder. So if we can curl something, we should be able to curl and output it to a folder. So if we say minus O, output or similar. Okay, so I can use minus O for output. All right, so I should be able to just output that command into my uploads folder. That, that should be simple. All right, so let's go back here and say, okay, all right, so first, let me locate my PHP reverse shell. I need to see if I can upload a reverse shell to my machine. So locate shell.php. 
Okay, so let's copy our PHP reverse show. This is the normal PHP reverse show that you can uh, have anywhere, really. So let's copy that. So let's copy and name it shell.php. All right. So if I do an ls, now I have my shell.php, vi shell.php. All I need to do is make sure that this shell is pointing to my machine here. So let me insert. So this is 10.10. .10 I think it's 14.3. So yep, 10, 10, 14, 3. So that's what we need to call to. Uh, it's calling on port 888. That's fine. Let's leave it that like that. So now we want to upload this shell to the uploads folder that we saw earlier here. Because since we are running curl here, let's just do this. I want it to go to shell.php and I'm going to point it to my machine. 14.3. And instead of just uploading it here, let's output it minus output. And this time we should be able to just output it to our uploads folder. And it says slash, then let's name it. Okay, so that's what we are going to be uploading. But for us to upload it, we need to run Python here, um, a reverse, our HTTP server. So to do that, you say um, Python server on port 80, the port. So now we are hosting our reverse shell here. If we go back here and execute our command, we should be able to get our reverse shell to our machine. So now if I say go, requesting site, bash is not a good thing, but thing to put in a URL. Okay, why, what did I do wrong there? I obviously did something wrong. 10.10.14.3. Shell.php and we want to output it to uploads shell.php. Let's see. Let's try it again. Oh, finally it works. All right. So now let's let's start our listener. Netcat minus LV and P on port 8888. And now if we go and execute that shell that we have is going to be on slash uploads slash shell, which we have. Uh, it's shell.php. Let's go ahead and execute it. And bam, we're in. So that was a quick demonstration of how to upload a reverse shell using curl to this machine, which is haircut. So ID. Where am I here? WW data. All right. After trying a few things here, you will notice that if we run sudo minus L and it didn't work, we can try to upload a bunch of tools. But according to my um, privilege escalation uh, cheat sheet, here's how we can check for uh, permissions within our system. And here we will be able to see um, if any any of these uh, is running with SUIDs. And let's see if. There's anything that is really interesting that is running here. We're looking for something that is out of the ordinary, something that is not normal. Ping, unmount, sudo, we know all those things. Um, the one thing that pops up right away is uh, I get, I'm running screen. Screen, I think that's what we use for terminals. And the interesting thing is I have a version here, which is very interesting, right? Right away is why do I have a version? Is it vulnerable? So that's what sticks out right away when we check for SUIDs here. Um, so let's go back here and say, okay, yeah, we have screen. Do I have exploit? You can pop it in Google or, okay, or you can just do it this way. I can say search exploit and see if that version of screen is vulnerable. Okay. Sometimes I just need to do that. Oh, that is not cool. So 4.5, 4.5, let's see. 
All right, now I have some results here. Uh, local privilege escalation, but as you can see, I do have, uh, is this a shell? Then I can do this and I can say cat that. And look at that. We already have this right here. But the question is, does it work? Okay, so as you can see here, we have our exploit that is written in C, and this is the hardest part. Uh, we need to understand what's going on here. We cannot run this on our target machine because GCC is broken there. I tried it and it doesn't work. But if we look, we have a few parts here. We have um, this hack.c, and it includes this code right here. Then we have root.c which has uh, just this stuff here. Then we can run these commands here to execute it. So what we can do is let's, um, let's split this vertical. So what we're going to do is we're going to compile this locally, then put it on our target machine after it has been compiled. So let's copy that libhack.c and we just want to start from include all the way to done and so we want this that's what that's what that looks like okay that looks good then the second part The second part is root shell dot C starts there. That's root shell dot C. And I'm going to show you how to compile both of these. Okay. Now if I do an LS, I now have my root shell dot C and hack. All right, so now using GCC, I can say GCC, I want to compile um, minus output root shell for this one so coming from that let's just put it here GCC is going to compile my root shell here it gives me a few LS but I did get my root shell so I compiled that part then next I need to compile this part right here libhacks let's see but this is going to be a shared object so to compile a shared object with GCC is we say GCC HAX that SO for shared object and this is going to come from that so we're just compiling our exploit here oh something didn't happen properly so I did IDL So if I do an ls here, now I have my shared object. So I got my root, I got my shared object, and okay, now that I have those two, what I can do is I can upload them, then run this last part of our exploit manually. So to trigger it, I need to run this last part here. Do this at the end. So it, it should be in the temp folder for my uh, victim machine. Okay, so let's host Python HTTP right there. Paste that. All right, we're servicing our Python HTTP. Now that our know, Python HTTP server is running, let's go back here. Let's double get HTTP. Then uh, ten dot ten dot fourteen dot three slash. Uh, hex the shared object first we got that one and now we just compiled it differently right that we get http 10.14 and this time we need to get our root shell if i do that and say ls as you can see now i have my shared object and i have that the last part i need to do um, so this was my first attempt where it failed on me. So the last thing I need to do is manually run these and th to know how to run them I just go back 
And as you can see right here, it tells us we need to go, all right. So now we need to do what we did here. Uh, echo, okay, this is just an echo. So we first start with the city because that's what it's saying. Okay, print working directory here. So we're in the EDC, like it's saying. Then it's saying we need to run unmask. I'm just manually running it because it didn't run for us. Just pasting there, okay. Then it wants us to run this. There's probably a better way this could have been done, but I'm just manually doing it because that's what it said. Okay. And then the last part, we need to echo that. We're not going to echo anything. Let's copy the last part here where it says to, okay. So if we do paste, okay. So if I do a slash TMP and then a root, shell this is where we need to run our root shell I, I just didn't follow the last part of my command here here this is what it wants me to do right here so let's go back and do that bam so this should give me a root according to the exploit so this is a good machine where if I do an ID, I'm now root. So this is a good machine way uh, working with exploits and really breaking it down is very important. So I hope you found value in this. If I do an LS, I should be able to see my root flag. I'm not too worried about getting the root flags, but as you can see guys, I was able to get a root because if I do an ID, I am root. So that was interesting. I thought, um, Playing with the exploit was fun. So if you like this content, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next machine where we work with more exploits. So that was fun. Thank you.